Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sayer from Zintabas, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBT, ADAT and AFK exam. Please don't wait and subscribe to my channel on YouTube and visit my page at Zintabast, where I'm offering different personalized and self-study smart learning program at a very affordable cost to all my dear hardworking students. Today, I have taken a topic of periodontics that is gingival surgical technique, where we are mainly going to discuss gingivectomy and curettage, how to perform them along with gingivoplasty. That's a very important topic of exam and difficult to understand. Let us try our best to see what are the important concepts involved here. First of all, student, we try to understand what is curettage. Curettage uh, student is removal of disease lining of the pocket that we do with curettage. We are not going to remove any plaque or calculus that we do with SRP scaling root planning. But curettage is what we do with a curette and we are removing the disease lining of the pocket. Look at the definition of curettage here. Curettage means the scraping of the gingival wall of a periodontal pocket to separate the diseased soft tissue. When you remove the disease lining of the pocket, it's going to reduce the inflammation and reduce the pocket depth. But curettage is not for the deep pocket, right? Mild, moderate depth pocket, you can challenge with the curettage. Now, scaling is the removal of deposits from the tooth, like plaques and calculus. While root planing is smoothening of the root, right? So, what is the main objective of root planing is to create a visibly root, smooth root surface. Smoothening the root to remove the infected and the necrotic cementum that is done in the root planing. Now, what is gingival curettage and what is subgingival curettage? What is the difference between them? Gingival curettage consists of removal of inflamed soft tissue lateral to the pocket wall. When we talk about the subgingival curettage, it actually refers to the procedure that is performed for the apical to the epithelial attachment. You go deeper, apically, severing the connected tissue attachment down up to the osseous crest. If this is the depth for the gingival curettage, for subgingival, this is the depth up till the osseous crest. This is the bone here. Now, whether you plan the curettage or not, some degree of curettage is always done unintentionally when you do SRP, and that is called as the inadverent. Curettage. The curettage is done for aesthetic. The actual result is the formation of long junctional epithelium, which is the same result with the SRP alone. The theoretical clinical advantage of curettage over SRP alone was eliminated when new connected tissue attachment was proved to be an unattainable goal by using the curettage. The short and long term clinical trials have confirmed that. Gingival curettage alone provides no additional benefit when compared to SRP alone in terms of pocket depth reduction, attachment gain, or inflammatory reduction. So, curettage now has the indication of elimination of suprabony pocket, which are the shallow pocket where the base of the pocket is coronal to the mucogingival junction. So, elimination of suprabony pocket in which the depth is such that the calculus on the root can be completely visualized by deflecting the pocket wall with a blast of warm air or a probe. Curettage can be performed as a part of new attachment attempts in moderately deep intrabony pocket located in an accessible area where you can only do a close surgery, that means not by raising the flap. As a non-definitive procedure to reduce the inflammation prior to pocket elimination using other methods or in patient with whom more aggressive surgical techniques are contraindicated. So you can just do curettage there. For example, patient with uncontrolled diabetic, psychological problem, very elderly patients. Yes, as a method of maintenance treatment for areas of recurrent inflammation and pocket depth. For example, where you have done a flap surgery, on every maintenance call, you can do curettage. However, there are some contraindications to curettage too. So if the pocket wall is firm, fibrous, surgical treatment is required to eliminate the pocket regardless of the depth. Fibrous pocket will not shrink sufficiently, falling, scaling, and curettage. This is the contraindication for the curettage. Let us see the technique. The blade angulation is greater than 90 degree. You can see here, that's a right angulation for the gingival curettage. You can see the tip of the curette, right? This is the disease lining of the pocket. You can see a scraping lateral wall of the periodontal pocket. You can see the picture here. The so scaling and curettage technique. Number one is representing the three zones that must be removed, the A zone, the B zone and the C zone. Zone A is a subgingival plaque and calculus deposition. Zone B 
is a zone of circular epithelium and epithelial attachment and zone C, the innermost zone, is a zone of inflamed connective tissue wall of the pocket. Second is scalar in position to remove the zone A. Then zone 3, 3 is zone A removed and curate in position to remove the zone B. If you look at the picture here, fourth picture is zone B that is already being removed and curate is position now to remove the zone C. And the fifth picture you can see the zone C is also removed and only healthy tissue now is remaining here. And the sixth picture you can see the tissue is healed and the shrinkage inflammation has gone. So edema is reduced, shrinkage of pocket has occurred, reduction in the pocket depth. Now let's, now let's see the procedure. First of all you do scaling and root painting. The use of local anesthesia is optional. So the curate is selected so that the cutting edge will be against the tissue, right? So we know we have universal curate, we have area specific curate. So area specific curate are used specifically for certain areas. For example, Gracie 13, 14, you can use for mesial surfaces. Gracie 11, 12, you can use for distal surface. Curate task can also be done by universal curate that can be used on any tooth, any surface like 4R4L Columbia. Now the instrument is inserted so as to engage the inner lining of the pocket wall and is carried along the soft tissue usually in a horizontal stroke. We look at the case here. This is the first case. Before that, we should know that pocket wall you can support by gentle finger pressure on the external surface and then you are putting the curate under the cut edge of the junctional epithelium to undermine it, to remove it. When the subgingival curatage, you go further apically, the tissue attached between the bottom of pocket and the alveolar crest are removed here with the scooping motion of the curate to the to surface. The area is flushed to remove the debris and the tissue is partly adapted to the tooth by gentle finger pressure. So you can see the curatage of this case here, before and after pictures, you can see. So bad plaque and calculus here, you can see, regaining the attachment. Some more pictures before and after, you can see lots of inflammation, edema, swelling, calculus, recession. But in this picture, after curatage, you can see how the healing has happened. Now you can see all healthy gingival tissue here. Some more pictures of before and after. Let us talk about what is ENAP. ENAP students stand for excisional new attachment procedure where you are actually doing curatage with the knife. So you are giving an incision and then you are doing the curatage. The ENAP procedure, unlike scaling and curatage, was developed to ensure complete removal of circular epithelium epithelial attachment, granulated inflamed connective tissue and subgingival calculus and soft and necrotic cementum, everything removed properly by using ENAP. Basically, ENAP procedure is a curatage with a surgical blade, right? So when you give an incision, when you raise a flap for ENAP, the curatage will be more effective because it will increase your accessibility and visibility in the minimal tissue reflection. If you look at it here, when you do ENAP procedure, just like your flap, uh, surgeries you are firstly you are giving an internal bevel incision. A picture you can see this is the internal bevel incision that is being given internally from the gingival margin towards the alveolar crest. Then you remove the excised tissue with the curate and do the root planing. B picture. After excision of the tissue scaling and root planing is being performed and you approximate the wound edges. So healing after scaling and curatage, immediately after curatage, definitely a blood clot is formed, then hemorrhage is there, PMS, neutrophil will appear, there's a proliferation of granulation tissue, restoration and epithelialization of the sulcus will require at least one week of time, and then junctional epithelium, healthy one, will be restored in five days after treatment, and collagen fibers start forming 21 days. Immediately after curatage, definitely the gingiva will look uh, inflamed, bright red, hemorrhagic and after one week the gingiva appears reduced in height, slightly redder than normal. Two weeks it will take for the normal color, consistency, surface structure and contour of gingiva to be become normal. Now we talk about gingivectomy. Gingivectomy student is the excision of the gingiva. What are the indications of gingivectomy? Elimination of suprabony pocket regardless of their depth. If the pocket wall is fibrous and firm where the curatage was contraindicated. Elimination of gingival enlargement, elimination of supra bony periodontal abscesses, and also for the crown lengthening procedure. However, we don't do gingivectomy for the cases where you need 
for bone surgery or examination of bone shape and morphology because we don't expose the bone in gingivectum. If it happens, it is considered to be undesirable. So when you have to expose the bone, you have to raise a full thickness flap. Also, gingivectomy should not be done in the situation in which the bottom of the pocket is apical to the mucogingival junction. That means where the bottom of the pocket it's a deep pocket or intrabony pocket. No, we don't do gingivectomy there. Also, gingivectomy always heal by secondary intention, scarring, formation of granulation tissue. So, aesthetic consideration like in maxi anterior regions, you should not perform it. The gingivectomy technique students can be performed by means of scalpels, electrodes, laser beams or chemicals. All these techniques will be reviewed here, but surgical technique by using the scalpel is most recommended. Now, Let's see what we do in the gingivectomy procedure. First of all, pocket on each surface are explored with a periodontal probe and you're using a pocket marker. If you can see here, the pocket marker is making like a pinpoint perforations that will indicate this is the pocket depth. Each pocket is marked in several areas to outline its course on each surface. And then you are using the periodontal knife or Kirkland knife for giving the incisions on the facial and the lingual surfaces and those distal to the terminal tooth. In the arch. You are using the Orban knife for giving any supplemental interdental incisions if required and BP blade 11 and 12 and scissors are used as auxiliary instruments. You have to remember in gingivectomy what we do are the external bevel incision while the flap we were doing the internal bevel. In external bevel incision you are giving an incision that go externally from the alveolar crest towards the gingival margin. You can see the picture here. This continuous incision apical to the bottom of pocket indicated by pinpoint marking, right? So you can see this is a discontinuous incision and this is the continuous incision. Begins on the molar and extends anteriorly like this without any interruption. The incision is started apical to the mind point marking the course of the pocket and it's directed coronally, right? So it's directed coronally, that's why it's an external bevel incision to a point between the base of the pocket and the crest of the bone. So you have to make an incision as close as possible to the bone but without exposing the bone to remove the soft tissue coronal to the bone. Exposure of the bone is considered to be undesirable as I already told you. Now you can look at the picture here. The field of operation immediately after removing the pocket wall. Granulation tissue, calculus and other root deposits and the clear space where bottom of the pocket was attached. If you can look at the picture here, the incisions you are giving and this is a field of operation you can see after removing the pocket wall. The incision should be beveled at approximately 45 degree to the tooth surface and should recreate as far as possible the normal festooned pattern of the gingiva. If you don't give a bevel, if you don't give a slanting or an angled cut, it will leave a broad fibrous plateau that will take more time than ordinary required to develop a physiological contour. It's important for us to give a beveled incision. Remove the excised pocket wall, clean the area and closely examine the root surface. The most apical zone consists of a band like light zone where the tissues were attached and coronally to it some calculus remnants, root caries or root resorption can also be seen. So granulation tissue may be seen on the excised soft tissue. Carefully curate out the granulation tissue and remove any remaining calculus which is there and the necrotic cementum so that you have a clean smooth surface. Then you cover the area with a surgical pack. So you can see the picture here and how you are going to give the gingivectomy incisions. This is a surgical gingivectomy case. You can see this is a gingival enlargement, right? It can be due to inflammation. Gingival enlargement can be seen very commonly due to adverse effect of drugs like phenytoin, nifedipine, cyclosporine, before and after pictures you can see. So clot granulation tissue is formed. In the healing after surgical gingivectomy, 24 hour there is an increase in new connective tissue. The highly vascular granulation tissue grows coronally, creating a new free gingival margin and the sulcus. Capillaries are forming from PDL and within two weeks they connect with the gingival vessel. So it will take 12 to 24 hours that epithelial cells at the margin of the wound start to migrate over the granulation tissue. And the epithelial activity at the margin reaches a peak in 24 to 36 hours where epithelial cells advance by a tumbling action. This is important with the cells becoming fixed to the substrate by hemiresmosome and a new basement lamina. During first four weeks after gingivectomy, keratinization is less than it was prior to surgery, but complete epithelization can take up to one month of time and complete repair of the connective tissue will take about seven weeks of time. 